Hey, it's Carrie and it's been a while. I've been busy going through radiation therapy. And so I'd like to discuss my journey through that. March 25th was the first visit with the radiology oncologist. And that was where we kind of went over some of the things that I'd be going through, like side effects and what all treatment would entail, like going in the machine and all that. Um, so it was just kind of like an overview to see whether I wanted to go through with it or not. Just like, it was just like kind of an informational session. It wasn't like a like a real like starting thing is a lot of a info dump. So I think the main concern with this, um, whether I wanted to go through with radiation treatment or not was um, the side effects. And I got this little handy dandy notebook <laughs> to go in through all the different side effects that can happen. So it's just like this little informational pamphlet thing. And I'm kind of going through it just to remind myself what we went through. And, and so there's like a section for the pelvic region for when you have radiation therapy in your pelvic region. And there's like a whole page going through um, side effects that you can go through. So again, I'm gonna read through, just as a reminder. Pelvis was diarrhea, fatigue, hair loss, nausea and vomiting, sexual infertility changes, skin changes, and urinary and bladder changes. Those were all the like symptoms that we went over and um, like hair loss, like they weren't really concerned with that because I mean, it's not, um, a hair loss is more like if they're doing your head and well, I already had hair loss anyway, so I wasn't really too worried about that. Um, the diarrhea and like the constipation, they went over because like, even though they would be targeting my uterus, like your bowels are hanging out in that area where your uterus is. So there might be like some residual side effects for your bowels. So they said diarrhea could be a symptom, constipation could be a symptom. So they said like, watch out for that if you go through with this treatment. Um, they also mainly talked about incontinence because your bladder is also hanging out in that area. And like I said, they wouldn't be targeting the bladder, but since it's close to where they would be targeting, there would be, there could potentially be residual symptoms. So talking about incontinence, having to go more frequently, they said that would that could be uh, something to expect from this radiation treatment. Nausea and vomiting. I think they said that could be a possibility, but they didn't really expect it, so we weren't really worried about that. Skin changes. Um, radiation can cause your skin to be super irritated and. That was one of my concerns, but I just know that you can prevent that. And they went over, like, it would probably happen more towards the end of treatment. And if it did, they can, like, prescribe you lotions to help with the skin irritation. But um, I went ahead and got aquaphor. 
I mean, after we went through all this, like a few days later, I got Aquaphor just so I would be prepared and I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead, but um, I would just rub Aquaphor after each session just to make sure that my skin wouldn't get irritated and that would stay hydrated. But um, yeah, skin irritation is a symptom. So if you're watching this and you're about to go through, just I recommend just buying Aquaphor, and they I think they would just re they recommend that anyway. That's probably what they would prescribe you. But um, yeah, I would. Well, I did ask if it would be good to rub Aquaphor on before and after. So before you go through it and they told me they don't really want you to have uh, like any lotion on during it, like before you go and like during it, they don't want lotion on there. They probably just want your bare skin on there. So yeah, so don't put it on beforehand, but definitely when you're done with your day, um, put it on after just to prevent any skin irritation. Overall, like constipation, diarrhea, like bladder issues and skin issues was like what we focused on. And those didn't concern me too much because like I knew how to prepare for that. But my biggest concern for radiation therapy was the um, infertility issues that it may cause. And that was my main concern. And I think that was what we discussed the most just because I was concerned with that. So with the fertility, um, they were just going over that since I'm getting radiation in my uterus, maybe that's where it would be, um, it could cause infertility. It can potentially affect your ovaries and your eggs and them being viable. And they also discussed that there could be scar tissue in the uterus after radiation is over. And so it would be difficult to have a child forming in the womb because there's less space in there because of this scar tissue. So I was concerned about that because I would like to have children someday. So I can't, we really went over that and I was, I think I asked to like, can radiation affect or can radiation cause birth defects in any future children? I think they said no. And, uh, but I was also just concerned about fertility in general, how it, it can affect the ovaries viability, I guess is the right word. <laughs> um, so I was really concerned about fertility. And so we were discussing that. And um, he recommended I talk to a, a uh, fertility specialist. And he recommended the same person that I had spoken with them before, before um, my chemo started. Yeah, so I've spoke. I'd spoken with this person before, so I knew like some of the options. I went ahead and said, "Yeah, I would like to speak with this specialist again to know different options that I can go through." Because um, 
yeah, as I said, I'd spoken with her before. It was before the um, chemo started. And my main concern with chemo was birth defects, if it would affect the eggs, like the DNA in the eggs, and if it would cause birth defects. And I was told that there's no evidence that chemo causes birth defects in future children. So that was why I went ahead and went through chemotherapy without um, pausing, like a delaying chemotherapy. So I wanted to go ahead and have another discussion with her to see if I could delay uh, radiation, if it would be okay. And I asked the doctor too, like if I go through with this, like how long will it delay it? Because I don't want to wait too long because I don't want the like cancer to just rapidly start growing back, you know? And he said he, he was willing to delay it like a few weeks. So, um, he went ahead and we scheduled a, um, a zoom meeting with this, um, fertility specialist. So basically that was my main concern was just um, fertility side effects with um, radiation therapy. I knew that I would be having a meeting with the fertility specialist to know my options and whether or not it'd be okay to delay um, treatment a little bit or if I should just go ahead and just go with it but um so we got that scheduled but um after going through all the um potential side effects i just went ahead and scheduled my treatment as if i wasn't going to potentially delay it so april 1st was scheduled for the um initial like the test run they call it where they kind of, they don't do the actual radiation, but they just put you in the machine and make certain marks and do measurements. And I'll go over that later, but basically it's just a test run to make measurements. So when you actually do the actual treatment, they know where exactly to position you in the machine. So that was scheduled for April 1st and I didn't have the rest of it scheduled yet. So April 1st is when we would actually schedule the real radiation treatment. So overall, I just, I decided to go ahead with the radiation. I wasn't gonna do more chemo or just do nothing, you know? Um, I, opted to just go ahead with the radiation. So after the initial meeting with the oncologist, um, I finally got the Zoom meeting with the fertility specialist. And um, as I said, we I had met with her before for um, chemo, discussing like um, fertility preservation for chemo. And one of the options she discussed was, again, egg freezing, which is what we went over before, where they retrieve your eggs and they freeze them. And then you can, when you're ready to have a child, you can have them fertilized and implanted in the uterus. This was something my mom and I was discussing um, after our meeting with the oncologist but with the, the egg freezing was that they had told us that um, if you plan on having children to wait two years after chemo and then your eggs should be fine. Like you should have gotten rid of your janky eggs by then. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, we weren't thinking about that when we decided to 
schedule this meeting. Well, when I decide to schedule this meeting with the fertility specialist. So, and beforehand, I kind of opted out of that because it's expensive. That it's expensive to retrieve them and uh, store them. There's like a storage fee every month, and then there's an expense to unfreeze them and put them, put and fertilize them, put them in put the fertilized eggs in your uterus like there's a cost to all that and it's like I don't know what my future is going to be if I'm going to be able to afford all of that so like I opted out of that and also there would be a delay because they you've got to take hormones to be able to release a bunch of eggs at once so that that was going to delay my chemo and if I opted to do this before radiation, that's going to delay radiation. And I know my doctor said he was fine delaying it a few weeks, but with me already going through chemo, my eggs probably wouldn't be healthy, these eggs that they were going to retrieve. So, yeah, it wasn't, it wouldn't have been a smart choice to retrieve these eggs just because I had gone through chemo so that was I wasn't gonna do that <laughs> uh, the egg retrieval uh, there's a few other options she went over that I wasn't interested in that it was just too much work I, I can't quite remember what all they were and there's just like no guarantees either that your eggs would still be viable and all that. Um, so I was really leaning towards just going through with radiation and praying that my eggs would be fine and all that. And then she finally came, well, she didn't come up with it, but she mentioned this procedure where they um, move your fallopian tubes up, like your ovaries and your fallopian tubes, they take like a stitch and like your ovaries and your fallopian tubes, they take a stitch and they um, move it up. So they would be moving them um, out of range of the um, radiation range. So um, they use the stitch to like move your ovaries up and it's like a temporary stitch. So it would dissolve eventually. So your ovaries would be moved up temporarily while you're going through radiation treatment to keep them out of the field of radiation. And over time, the stitches would dissolve. And so your fallopian tubes and your ovaries would slowly move back into the original position. And that was actually something I was interested in because, I mean, it's a temporary fix it's not super invasive so I told her I was actually interested in that procedure so the fertility specialist said that she would call my well she was originally going to call my um, gynecologic oncologist the one who took my biopsies and call her and see if she was willing to do that. But I think she was on vacation or something. So she was going to call someone else to do it and see if they were willing to do that procedure. So she was going to call a gynecologic surgeon for that. And um, I also let her know that I kind of wanted to discuss this with the radiation oncologist too to see it to get his opinion, see if that would actually help or if um, there would be still be too much like residue, I guess, of radiation that would, 
it would, even though the eggs were moved up, if it would still, if they'd still be affected and whether or not the surgery would even be worth it. So, yeah, she's like, yeah, I'll call that person and, um, you, you talk with your, um, radiation oncologist and just get back with me and we'll all get back together and discuss how you want to proceed. So she would call me back eventually and let me know if the surgeon was willing to operate on me and whether or not I wanted to go through with it after discussing it with my radiation oncologist. So April 1st comes and that is the simulation day. Before I did the test run though, I had a meeting with the radiation oncologist and I went over my plans to go through with this surgery or I at least asked him like if it was a good idea or if despite the ovaries being moved up, if they would still be affected by the radiation. And he said that, he agreed that it was probably a good idea. He said that the ovaries probably would still have like a little tiny bit of residual radiation, but it wouldn't be as bad if I did go through with this procedure and he was also saying that it would be good hormone wise because um, one of the symptoms or one of the side effects for radiation can be that it can actually affect the ovaries in general, which would affect your hormones. So he was saying that moving him up would like protect my hormones too. Like it would just keep my hormones more regulated. So that helped me feel more comfortable with going through this procedure. So, um, so when I got the call back from the fertility specialist, I'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and go through with it. And not just for, um, fertility, preservation but also for hormonal like I didn't even think about that until my doctor brought it up so I felt more confident going through with that procedure so and he like I said I asked like how long would it delay the actual treatment because this session I went ahead and just get didn't delay this because it's just a, a test run but um I didn't know how long it would delay the actual radiation and he said he didn't really know but again like if it was just gonna delay it a few weeks um he'd be fine with that and it's not like this procedure was gonna be super invasive so it probably it probably would have just been a few weeks delayed so um after I had the meeting with my doctor, we went ahead with the test run. And before I started the test run, they asked me like my schedule, like what would be the best time to have your radiation sessions. And I wasn't sure um, because I was like worried about having to take half days because you know usually your doctor appointment they like close at 4 and my work ends at 3.30 and I didn't know if like how long they were open but I, so I just mentioned like sometime after 4 if that's possible. And they were like, okay, we'll see what we can do. So I was hoping to be able to have it past four. And so after that, um, we started to go through with the test session. So for the test run, um, 
there's this big machine that goes around you and um, you lay down and for the test run there's like this big like it wasn't a bean bag it was like an airbag there that that's the right word the airbag it was like an airbag and I put my legs in the airbag and they deflated the airbag to form into how my legs were positioned because every session that you go through you they want you to be in the exact same position and so they were um forming this airbag around my legs that way every single time i would put my legs in the airbag that's like already conformed to how my legs were for the test run and they also were putting, they put like little marks along my legs to just like for measurements and they put stickers on that. And those marks were to stay on the entire time. Like they did, they don't want you washing them off. They don't want you taking the stickers off. And um, those stay on until your very last radiation session. So they put the marks on me in the stickers. And now I remember they, and I also had a IV contrast. And I think that just measured where exactly the mass was so they can pinpoint where to put the lasers, I guess. So, um, yeah, there's a IV contrast for the test run, but that's the only time I needed the IV contrast. Uh, the test run might have been like 20 minutes, maybe. Maybe not that long, but I don't know, it was a while ago. <laughs> so I don't remember exactly, but um, yeah, you just lay there with your legs flailed out and it's gonna be different for each cancer. Like if you have breast cancer, you're probably gonna be laying on your side and they'll probably have it conform to your side or like if there's something, if you have brain cancer or something, they'll probably have it conform to your head. But since my cancer is located in my uterus, um, they were focusing on the pelvic region. So I had to have like frog legs, I like to call them. I have like my legs flailed out like frog. And so the airbag was conformed to that. So you lay there with your legs flailed out in this airbag and you're under this machine and it spins around you. And um, the machine that they used the test for, that was the machine that they were going to do the actual radiation. But um, since this was the test run, they didn't have any radiation going on at all. It was specifically just to make measurements. So after my test session was done, I was given a schedule of my actual radiation therapies. And luckily they were all after four o'clock, so I would be able to still work a full day. So I was happy about that, that I wouldn't have to take off a lot of time for work. Except the first session. The first session was at like 1230. Because I think they want to go over stuff first with the doctor. And then every Monday, I would be meeting with the doctor just to go over if I had any side effects and just to like bring that up in case he's like worried about that, you know. Every Monday would be a meeting with the doctor and then I would go ahead and have my radiation session. Uh, um, when I got the schedule, I was shocked because 
there was 36 sessions total. And so it was from the middle of April all the way to the beginning of June. So it was like two months worth of sessions. And I was confused because when our first meeting with the oncologist, he said it'd be like about 15 sessions. And so it's like double the sessions that we were told. So I was like, what? <laughs> this is way more than I was told. So well, that was shocking. But um, yeah, so it was gonna suck having to have so many sessions. Our first meeting, he said, because um, fatigue is a symptom too, or a side effect. And he said, um, you probably won't be too fatigued at the beginning, but at the end of your session, you'll probably feel more fatigued. And he was saying like 15 sessions. So like after 15 sessions, you're going to start feeling fatigued. But now like going through 36, like if I was going to feel fatigued at 15, like how tired am I going to be at 36? Like, Am I going to have to call off work all the time now because I'm going to be so exhausted? So yeah, that was a little worrisome having 36 sessions, but yeah, I just, I just had to tell myself, you're just going to have to handle it one day at a time. So don't worry too much about it right now. Just Go one day at a time and see how you're doing. Don't worry too much about having to call off work. So, yeah. So after that initial test run, a few days later, the fertility specialist called and she said that the um, gynecological surgeon that she contacted, she was willing to able to do this procedure for me and um i told her that um i was willing to go through with it after discussing it with my doctor and so um we were just kind of discussing um having a phone call with the surgeon so she can go over everything that she would be doing and like scheduling this surgery so um, I was expecting a phone call from the surgeon soon just to go over what the procedure entailed and to have it scheduled. And I decided that I kind of wanted to do a little more research on this um, procedure. So I Googled it and um, it's, it has a certain name, but I can't remember what the procedure exactly is called but I googled it to like learn more about it and um there was a website from I think it was like some hospital in New York but it's a procedure that they do but I was reading it and how this hospital does it they actually remove the ovaries like they detach the ovaries from the uterus and they um sew them to like your abdomen like closer to your kidneys or liver or something so they actually detach it and that worried me like that's not what I was told. And I went further along and they did mention that um, just temporarily moving them with the dissolvable stitch, but they only do that with children because I guess they're smaller. So it would, I don't know, it, like it just works better for children to have them moved up, whereas adults. I guess it's not as effective just moving them up slightly 
So for adults, they actually detach it from the uterus. And so I was like, oh no, <laughs> that's not what I want because this is a little more permanent and they can't reattach the ovaries. And so if you wanted kids, you have to do the um, egg retrieval anyway, which is what I totally opted out of because I, I didn't want to do egg retrieval. I just wanted like something temporary. And so like, it would be pointless to even do this if that's how they do it at OSU. And so I finally got the call from this um, surgeon. And um, so we were, she was like discussing with me and I asked, well, I think she asked me like what, before I tell you what I'm going to do, I kind of want to get an idea of what you think this procedure is. And so I told her that I thought that it was just a temporary um, moving of the ovaries with a temporary stitch and that the stitch would eventually dissolve and your ovaries would eventually go back to how they were because that's what I was told. And so she said, no, that's not what I would do. And I did discuss with her that I did read online about the whole um, detaching the ovaries and sewing them somewhere else. And she said that, yeah, that's what I would be doing. I would be detaching your ovaries from your uterus and I would be sewing them to your abdomen, like closer to, I think she said your kidneys, like closer to where your kidneys are to get them out of the field of radiation. And she said, so yeah, it wasn't a temporary thing. It's not like a dissolvable stitch. Your ovaries would be staying there for the rest of your life. And there's no way to reattach your ovaries. So, and she was saying, so she was saying, if you wanted a biological child, you would have to have um, a surrogate for you, like an egg retrieval and have a surrogate hold it for you. So after she told me how the procedure was really gonna go, I opted out of it. <laughs> so it was, kind of disappointing to hear one thing and then actually it's another thing. And I don't think the fertility specialist was like trying to deceive me or anything. I think she was probably under that impression herself and she told me that and then she probably had the discussion with the surgeon I'm sure the surgeon told her, well, actually, this is how I do it. And so, yeah, that was kind of disappointing. I'm here thinking that um, this is a good idea that I can keep my ovaries healthy. And then that just gets kind of dashed down. So I wasn't going to go through this procedure which meant that I wasn't going to delay treatment. I wasn't going to delay radiation treatment. And um, the surgeon was also kind of asking me um, what my plans were for children. And I did tell her I would like to have biological children one day. And she was saying that with radiation, 
it can cause um, scar tissue in your uterus, which is something we discussed um, day one when I met the doctor. So I was aware of the scar tissue and she said because it can cause scar tissue, there would not be enough room for the fetus to form properly. So she said that I should not carry a pregnancy and that I should have a surrogate, like, no matter what. And that was hard to hear. Because, I mean, I do want to have biological children. And it's like, I'm not against adoption. I would adopt if I had to. But it's like, I want to try to have my own first. And I don't know, maybe that's selfish. But it's like, I think there's just something special about you creating another human yourself and like this kid is literally a part of you it's literally half of you and it's I think that's just something special you know like this is a hu another little human that I created <laughs> and it's just hard to hear that no you shouldn't do that or at least have a surrogate if you want a biological child and um it's just hard to hear that because it's like I don't know if I would be able to afford a surrogate and you know it's like it's not guaranteed you know there's like a process to it all the whole egg retrieval thing like that's an ordeal with the hormones and that and then having it frozen and then um, unfreezing them and then like having them put in someone else. It's like it's not guaranteed that they'll even um, become pregnant with those, you know, and it's like you'd have to pay the surrogate too and it's like. I'm like, I'm obviously not against surrogacy, but it would be difficult, you know? And um, if I just tried to have my own child anyway, um, and if I did become pregnant, I'm just afraid that, I'm afraid that if my kid is like, messed up somehow or they end up being premature it's gonna be my fault because I was told that I shouldn't carry it myself and I did it anyway so I mean there's that too so it's just hard hearing that you shouldn't do something. And um, so I'm just praying that I don't have scar tissue. So yeah, that's just a new worry of mine is not being able to have my own child. Like I said, I'm not against adoption. If I had to adopt, I would, but I would still like to have my own biological child. So yeah, it's not something you wanna hear. So I am just praying that I will not have any scar tissue and that I will be able to safely have a pregnancy of my own and that my child will be 
healthy. So, yeah, I'm praying for that for myself and you all can pray that for me too. That would be appreciated. So the ovary surgery was a no-go. So, I mean, I, in a way that's good because then I didn't have to delay radiation treatment. So I had to shake off that disappointing call. And uh, April 14th was my first actual radiation session. And it just so happened that I had my stent replacement scheduled that same day. So in the morning I had my stent replaced. And after I had my stent replaced, we, my mom and I had to wait a little bit for this um, session to start. So we hung out at Wendy's for a little bit, had some food. And um, so finally the um, appointment started. I went back to the place where you get your radiation and um, they gave me a new schedule and they said, uh, your doctor went over it and um, he said that he thinks you can actually get your um, radiation done in 18 sessions instead of 36. And so that was good that I had a lot less sessions to go through. So I was happy about that and kind of pleasantly surprised like, oh, okay, that's good. And it was closer to what I was told in the first place. And so, yeah, I got the new schedule, a lot of sessions to go through. And so, um, you, um, declothe yourself <laughs> or, well, for me, I, I just had to take my pants off. If you have, um, a different type of cancer, you'll have to take different forms of clothes off depending on what your cancer is. But for me, it was just the pants and they have you wear a hospital gown and then you lay down at the machine and um they had the airbag there that was deflated to be formed to my legs because they want your legs to be in the same exact position each and every time the first session they say is a little bit longer than the rest of your sessions, like a few minutes longer. They remarked the spots where they marked on my legs. They remarked those and put all new stickers. And those marks are, they, there's like a laser kind of like shining and they just line you up with that laser. That's what the marks are for. The machine goes and it pushes you inside like a tunnel and it spins around like once then the table will move a little bit it adjusts because that's like how they pinpoint where exactly they're gonna have the radiation and they um do those adjustments based on the measurements they took on the simulation. They, that's what the measurements are based on the simulation. And so it moves each time to get the exact measurements. So they're always exactly pinpointing at the correct position, I guess. So they're not like accidentally hitting something else. You know, they want to be very precise in where they do this radiation. And so the table will adjust itself and then it'll spin around you again and then it's done. It's nice because they'll, they'll play music, at least where I went, they play music. It might be different for other people, but, um, I think a lot of places play music, but um, yeah, they, they'll ask you like what kind of music you like and 
you'll say like I like this and they'll go on like Pandora I think it is and they'll have a playlist of the kind of music you like and so you'll listen to music while you're going through radiation so that's nice so after the first session was done I went back and I saw the doctor and uh, we were going over the schedule and how we we're like Man, we're happy that it's only 18 now. And my doctor was like, it was never 36 sessions. <laughs> and he said, um, the person I was scheduling, um, 36 is like the dosage that I got is like 36 grays or whatever. It's, I can't remember the unit of measurement that it's called, but it's, 36 something was what my dosage was and they misinterpreted that as 36 sessions and so like he went over with them and he's like oh no <laughs> it's not 36 sessions um it's gonna be 18 sessions <laughs> so it was never gonna be that many sessions <laughs> to begin with it was just a mistake on the schedulers part. So that was a relief. I think he just basically said like what your day's gonna entail, just going through and like what symptoms to expect. And um, every Monday before my Monday radiation session, we'd have a doctor meeting with him just to go over if I have any symptoms or other concerns. And he'd let me know how things look on his end. So after the doctor discussion, uh, session number one was done. And then I had 17 more sessions after that. Um, these sessions were every Monday to Friday. Uh, Mondays were a little earlier because of the doctor appointments. Um, they were... I think they started at 4.20 and then all the other days were at 4.40. So every day after work, I would go and get my radiation sessions and um, I would have the weekends off. So that would be my break. And um, also, they don't do holidays. You would have a break over the holidays, but it just so happened that there were no holidays during my schedule, so there wasn't any days that were skipped. April 14th was the first day, and then, like I said, Monday through Friday, I would, after work, go and have my radiation session and go through the whole spiel of laying down, having the machine spin around me, and that took, it was usually maybe like 10 minutes at the most. So it was really quick, a lot faster than chemotherapy. <laughs> Where chemo was several hours long, this was just uh, a few minutes. Uh, honestly, the wait time, the prep, the prep time was longer than the actual session. So radiation is does not last that long. And May 9th was my last session. So radiation wasn't too bad. I think just the word radiation and going through all the symptoms on day one is is more terrifying than actually going through with it. Side effects, I really didn't have a lot of side effects. Um, probably my main side effect was with my bladder. I felt like I had to pee a lot more often so I'd be going every like two hours 
just so I wouldn't pee my pants. I didn't really have any bowel issues, no diarrhea, no constipation, fatigue, um, maybe a little bit of fatigue, probably just like I felt a little more tired than I usually did, like getting up from work and going to work and in the morning I'm like, I want to go back to bed immediately. And, I mean, I'm usually tired in the morning anyway because I'm not a morning person, but I felt like maybe it was, I was a little bit more tired than I usually would have been, but I wasn't like so tired that I couldn't work or get up, so it was just a very slight um, tiredness, fatigue. Uh, no nausea. Skin-wise, um, I mean, I made sure that I wouldn't get like a bad skin rash or anything, so each session I would just put on a bunch of aquaphor in my pelvis region where they where the radiation would have been focused on. So um, I never had skin issues. Like I said, every Monday I would have um, a meeting with the doctor just to go over any symptoms I would have and he did say with this dosage that he didn't expect any skin irritation. So that was good. And I guess I didn't really need the aqua for, but I mean, I guess it was good just as a precaution to use it. I do want to mention that in the middle of my treatment that I did end up having a period. So I think that's a good sign that um, the radiation didn't like bust up my fertility completely. I mean, I'm hoping that's a good sign. And um, I did mention that with my doctor. Um, I said that um, I started my period and he was saying like, well, um, sometimes you can have a little bit of bleeding, but it's the, uh, just your body getting the mass out of you. So you might just be like having the mass coming out of you. And he said like, do you have like other symptoms? Like, and I told him like, no, this feels like a period cause it like, I have like period cramps and it's like actually like flowing. Uh, I also, um, cause he went over like things on his end and I asked him like, can you tell if there's like any scar tissue? And he said like, they're not really specifically looking for scar tissue. So like they're not paying attention to that, but he told me, that with my dosage being like a lower dosage than most radiation patients that he didn't expect too much scar tissue in the uterus. So I'm happy about that. And I hope that's a sign that I can still have my own children. And he was saying like, he was happy with things on his end. Like the CAT scan was showing that it's always in the same spot the uh, where the radiation is going, which is what they want. So um, he said like that would, like it being in the same spot would reduce like residual stuff. Like you're not, getting it in spots that you don't want it in. So um, overall, I think radiation went pretty good. Again, I didn't see any um, too many side effects.
I mean, just a little bit with like having to pee more often. But um, I'm hoping with uh, me having a period within the uh, ongoing sessions and my doctor saying that he didn't expect too much scar tissue. I'm hoping these are all good signs that I'll still be able to carry a child. I'm just praying that there's no scar tissue and that any fetus I have will have enough room to grow in there and I won't have to worry about my baby not being healthy. Now we're waiting to schedule another PET scan. And um, I've been told that PET scans don't measure how small the mass gets. They measure the glowing. And I think that was, that was part of like me asking about like, can you see if there's any like scar tissue any, or anything? And, that's what um my radiation oncologist was talking about he's with pet scans so like I, don't know, I guess in order to see if there's scar tissue i'd need like an ultrasound a pet scan won't pick that up all they do is measure the glowingness so even if there's no glowing there could still be scar tissue so anyway i'll i'll be getting the pet scan and Hopefully there will be no glowing this time at all. And that radiation actually worked and got the rest of that stubborn mass out. So pray for me that this PET scan will come back well and that the cancer is completely gone and also pray for me that my fertility has not been affected by this and that I have little to no scar tissue in my uterus. Be sure to like and comment this video. It will help other people find this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and also be sure to follow my Instagram at heyitzoo90. Thank you for watching this video and I will keep you all updated on any news. Bye.